So we're in advanced steel and we're taking a look at the Great Tech Power Pack and in particular stairs and railings. And we're going to look at the railing elements. So I have my ribbon set to power pack. I'm going to go here and check stairs and railings bolt, which will bring up an advanced steel pallet when I select it. With that selected, you have several different tabs down the side. I'm going to make sure that I'm in railings and I'm going to go to standard and select a standard railing type. With this, I get this prompt in front of me on the screen, a contextual prompt, and also down at the command line, you'll see a similar thing. So in this case, I'm going to select lines. This is one of the unique features of the Gratex railings is that you can actually draw it and model it to a line. So I'm selecting this baseline and then it follows a series of other prompts. <clears throat> so I can select additional objects such as beams or plates for it to be connected to. I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to press enter or right click on the mouse to move forward. Do you want to select base points for your posts? Yes or no. So these may be these um, vertical lines that you see on the screen here representing the post positions. In this case, I'm going to go no. Do you wish to select a nosing point? I am going to do this in this case because this is an additional offset that can be influenced the vertical height of the rail. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to select this point that's slightly above my baseline that I picked. By selecting that, it now causes the macro to generate the rail. It will take a few moments for it to appear on the screen. Now that we see that the dialogue has appeared, we can see that the railing has been generated in the background. We can now start altering this. And the best way is just to walk yourself through it, is to start here at the post and the properties sub tab. Under here, come into the profile selector. Scroll down to what you wish to select. In this case, I'm going to select a UK box section and I'm going to select a suitable size. 40 by 40. We can now see this has changed. Whilst we're in this tab, we can obviously see the overall railing layout arrangement. And I wish to try and match the dimensions that I've got here. So what we would now do is change the position tab here. I won't change the post alignment in this case, but if I had had an object selected, I could go left or right of that. And I can go left or right of the baseline I selected as well. So the first thing I might do is come down in here. Normally, I would probably change this to projected horizontal. So no matter what I was doing, the measurements would always be between the horizontal distance. Then I'd come in and start altering the variables in these boxes. And this will move the start and end points of the posts. So the first and last post will now line up with the 500 dimensions and because I'm using a max distance center of a meter, the other posts have aligned with the meter as well. You can change this to by number and set the number of posts as well. So if you want to, for instance, I'll just do that. And I could sneak an extra post in there if I so wished and it will now put an extra post into the railing. I'm just going to pop it back to by max distance for this demonstration. Once we've done that, we can now change to the handrails tab. And here, this is made up of several sub tabs, top handrail, middle handrails. And these are what we're going to focus on in this demonstration. So again, we're going to come in and we're going to change the type of handrail. So in this case, we're looking for a flat section. So you can scroll up and down using the scroll bar on the right of the dialog, and we can see flat there. Again, you just need to give it a chance for it to load. If you come down in here, you can set your size. So I'm setting this to a common size used in the UK. Similarly, I will now change here. And to be honest, I'll probably come in and the first sub tab to the side that I'm going to go to is the properties tab. And I'm going to make sure that I'm in handrail here and I'm going to change this. And again, I probably want a flat section. So again, I'm just going to scroll down in the dialog and I'm going to set a corresponding size that I require. So just changing that, we can now see that it's changed on the screen. 
So the next thing that we probably need to think about looking at is the control of the heights. So I'm just going to pop back to the top rail here. Now we can see here it's set to 1100, which is a typical rail size. And something to note is that if you actually zoom in here, you can see that the top rail is actually lined up with 1100 dimension and it's actually 1100 above here, but it's to the middle of the rail. That is the system line position. If we want it to be on the outer edge, we would change it to outer edge and the section will drop down. Similarly, we can now change back to the middle rail tab. Go back to the sub side tab, which is the positioning. And the first thing we we'll probably notice is that we're going to try and achieve two middle rails. So we'd come in here and change this to two. Now what you will notice is that this tab has actually changed it, brought it in as a rail, but it's actually brought it in as a tube section. This does sometimes happen. So again, just pop back down in here, come into the flat size that you might require, and again, just scroll down and set it. What you can do is actually set the number to two first, then come in and under the tree structure here, which we'll see throughout this, actually change the size at that level and then both rails will be the same. Similarly, we could come in here and we can change a rail size. So down here, this rail size could change to 30 by 10. We now pop back to the positioning tab. And the thing to look out for here is because we only have uh, rail on the straight level section, the slope section is greyed out. And again, we need to look at the dimensions. So what we want here is say 100 millimetres. If we enter that, we'll see the bottom rail will drop down. But again, it's on the system line position. So we would change this to outer edge. And similarly now, we need to look at the intermediate distance because this is set to intermediate. So in here, if we come in here and type in the intermediate distance that is required to achieve the top rail, basically the shadow rail that is under the top handrail section, we can now see this has been adjusted. With that in place, we could come down and we could put some pickets in place or infill bars. So we change to the infill tab and the first thing we select is infill type and select pickets. With that, you'll see that the macro will pull something in from a default. Again, I would pop down into the next sub tab, which is properties. And for this, we're gonna focus on just changing it to a round bar. So again, we can scroll down within the dialog until we come to round bar. We can now change this to a typical size. The next nice feature that we have is the calculation between the infill bars. At the moment, this is set to 250. Let's change this to 100 millimeters. We can now see that the calculation is the identical spacing between each bar, and that includes the end base. Also, we notice that actually, in the very end parts of the rail, they're not populated. This can also be activated by activating the two checkboxes in the bottom for creating pickets at the start and the end of the rail. And again, you can enter offsets in here to move those start positions backwards along the rail. To create a simple post connection to the bottom, we would come in to post connections tab and under the sub, sub tab connection type, we would change this to an end plate. You activate it by checking or pressing the button. 
we then now come down to connection definition. And we look at the presentation here of the length and the width of the plate and a series of sub tabs. And just to come back and mention that we do have a tree structure in here. This is common within the Great Tech Macro. If you had multiple segments, you would get each segment listed here and be able to change it individually. So for this, we're just going to change the length to 200. And then we're going to change the width to 120. We're just going to pop back up to here and change the plate thickness to 10 millimeters. Another nice little feature is to be able to put a chamfer or corner cut as it may be termed. In this case we're changing it here and we can enter a figure in here which will control the radius of it. This is actually controlled so far the position, shape and size of the plate. What we should do now is take a look at the connectors. So under here we can have bolts or anchors or just be welded. So in this case we're on bolts. Again we can change the size of the bolt and the bolt will increase. You can change the hole tolerance if you so wish. Positioning. So what I do here is I'm just going to change this and in here we're going to change this to say 60 millimeters. That will change the spacing between the two bolts across. And then here we're going to change this to a more suitable figure to achieve a 30 mil edge distance on the plate size of 200. So we can see now we've created a very simple basic railing in the level direction using a few parameters from the dialog that are available. Thank you for watching this short introduction to using the Greytech Railing Macro. Greytech.